I wanted to make this video after watching Made in Abyss because I was struck by how it reveals its world. Made in Abyss has a very distinctive fantasy world. Um, it has very much its own rules and its own approach and its own structure. And it's pretty uncommon for a fantasy series to so deftly uh, express that world to its audience um, in a way that feels natural. And I want to not only call that out, but talk about how the show does it. The first thing it does is a classic method used by storytellers for centuries. If you're trying to explain a new world to your audience, introduce a character who has no knowledge of that world so that the characters can explain things to this new character that the audience and reader or whatever want to know. So if a stranger is now coming to Middle Earth, um, that stranger is going to ask the same questions that the reader or audience would naturally ask. And that's what we get with Reg. Reg is clearly the outsider, the character with no knowledge whatsoever of the world, who then uh, gets introduced to that in the first episode. And Rico, in contrast, loves talking about the world. She's very enthusiastic about expressing those things. So we get this perfect matchup of personality. Reg is curious. Rico is naturally bubbly and, and very free with her information. So the information flows very freely. However, two important things there. The show doesn't really overwhelm the viewer with world information in its first couple episodes. Yes, it is fairly heavy on info dump. And if the show has a major weakness in the first couple episodes, it is that. There's a lot of world explanation to you. But because it is a unique world, they're not telling you, hey, elves exist. They're telling you about the layers of the abyss and how they work and the curse and so forth and so on. So uh, it's understandable to a certain degree. But another important aspect is Reg. Reg is also, in and of himself, a mystery. So while Reg is asking these questions and learning about the world, and we're getting these info dumps, we're also curious about the characters. We understand a little bit about Rico's uh, curiosity, even before we know her whole backstory. It's natural for a child in this kind of world to be curious about how it works. Um, but Reg is this big question mark, and so that allows the audience to um, wonder about that question while they're watching the show and while this info dump is being poured on them and provides some spice during that experience. We then get to explore that world pretty quickly, and again, I was impressed at how the show doesn't wait until halfway through for the characters to go down into the abyss. We, we dive pretty quickly. And it's worth noting that it would be um, an easy um, approach for the show to take by previewing the abyss before the characters actually get there, by showing you other characters in the abyss, but by only showing little bits on the first level and um, really leaving those surprises for later on, um, they can be surprises. Again, Rico could very easily have said, oh, and then there's this monster and this monster, we've got to watch out for this and this and that. And while she does mention some of those things, you get no details, you get no real explanation of what those things are. Um, so when you actually encounter them, there's genuine fear about those creatures and monsters um, especially the ones that you've never seen before. Um, and this also fits in with the world. Rico has a lot of book knowledge, but she hasn't actually experienced these creatures yet herself. I also think that the curse is kind of driven by the story, i.e. how do you make these kids actually have to keep going in a very dangerous environment like this? Um, one of the really smart things from a storytelling perspective about the curse is that without the curse, there would be well-stocked base camps like every few inches in the abyss as people got deeper into it, right? 
you know, you wouldn't have large unexplored areas. Folks would, you know, very much colonize each bit of the abyss as they get lower and lower to increase the safety factor. Um, and so any character would go, you know, a certain uh, uh, distance and then be able to retreat safely um, to something fairly reasonable. Um, obviously not every few inches. I'm being over the top there, but you get what I, I'm saying. Um, you know, people would have lots of defenses and, and things um, set up all throughout the abyss as they're kind of exploring it. That's just what, that is how normal human society would react to that kind of thing. Um, if you didn't have that, you'd be kind of like, these, are, these don't really behave like humans. Um, but the curse doesn't allow you to do that, right? The curse means you cannot retreat. Retreat is literally suicide um, at a certain point. And I think, again, I think that makes a lot of sense that it provides a, um, um, a reason for the characters to do what they're doing and a reason for other characters to let them do what they do. Uh, Rico and Reg are unrecoverable once they get to a certain point in the abyss. Um, so folks are not going to come after them. I also appreciate that there is legitimate creative monster design in Made in Abyss. A lot of fantasy series will have monsters that are basically humans with horse heads or um, an insect with fur or something along those lines. And it's not that that cannot be imaginative or interesting, but it's often, uh, you know, two things stuck together or one thing with a slight variation. And while the stuff in Made in Abyss is, is not like the most wildly creative thing I've ever seen in my life. There's clearly a lot of time and attention made to really make this this feel bizarre and and is very different from normal earth flora and fauna. Again, I really appreciated that. For a story about diving into the unknown, if the audience doesn't feel like it's unknown, um, it really pulls them out of the narrative. So check mark there. Now, of course, Made in Abyss isn't over. The TV series is just the first chunk of the story, and there's more to be told. And um, it, it, very clearly, the, it doesn't, the ending, it, that ending. Um, so there's obviously more world to explore. There's, there's much um, more things in this, um, in this setting. Um, so I don't want to suggest that this is the be-all, end-all of that, but... Um, again, I did appreciate how the world building was explored um, in this and what was provided to the audience in Made in Abyss. And just wanted to call that out. Good job, Made in Abyss. I just wish your final episodes weren't literally traumatizing. <laughs>